If you're buying Corsair fans, it's important to know a few different things because you might get confused otherwise, especially if you're new to the PC building space or you're just new to the way Corsair is doing its wiring. There are a few different ways Corsair fans are set up and it might well be confusing. And I realised this because essentially a few years ago I created a guide on how to wire Corsair's RGB fans. But now if you go and reference that video, it might well be confusing and perhaps wrong in some cases. And that's because Corsair has changed the way it wires its fans and the way they're set up. So I wanted to cover this briefly and show you the three different versions of how this works and what it can mean to maybe help avoid confusion. And then I'll link to the videos in the description which will also help you out. So start by looking at this fan, which is one from a good few years ago, but basically followed the same logic that Corsair has been using for a number of years with its RGB fans. You'll notice that there are two cables coming out of it and they're pretty long. The other tell is that this one has got a yellow label on it that says 2RGB hub. Now these fans basically required for the easiest amount of wiring for you to use Corsair's Commander Pro or Commander Core to set these up to connect them to it. Now the fan power connector is pretty straightforward and can be connected to the motherboard but the RGB connection isn't so much, it's more proprietary and it's difficult to use and so you had to either use an LED node or an RGB node or most easily a Commander Core or a Commander Pro which is basically a controller that you had to buy separately. So this was complicated and as you can see two fan cables per fan which meant if you put a lot of fans in your system it became very contrived and messy and complicated and that was my initial wiring guide. Now just recently, a year or so back, Corsair updated their fan logic and released these style of fans which is the IQ Link setup. Now these come in various different models as do those ones I just showed you but this is essentially a much easier fan system to use. They're interlocking fans with a little connector you can put two, three, four fans together and then you can just run one cable out of it to a controller which can in theory connect up to 24 different devices so you can plug 24 fans into it running cables on either side 12 devices per side which is obviously a lot of fans in your system and it's a very small controller which does have its own problems because it requires a PCIe power cable which you might not have spare of and that could be a problem in itself but generally speaking these are a much easier fan to use they also come in reverse blade models as well so that's good. They do, however, cost a premium, so they're pretty expensive. Now, these ones are pretty nifty because they've got a temperature sensor built into them, so each fan has its own temperature sensor, which is pretty awesome. The RGB lighting is good, the build quality is excellent, and there's lots of other things to like about them, but they are expensive. However, they do massively cut down on the complexity because you potentially only have one cable coming out of a group of fans rather than two per fan. Obviously if you have three of these that's just one cable. If you have three of these <laughs> that's six cables. So you can see how much easier IQ Link is. Now for a more budget option Corsair recently released fans like this which is the RS120 RGB which as you can see has more cables coming out of it. It's worth noting this is an older model so this was actually one of the original ones that they released, which had very long cables on it. Now the more recent versions of these have very short cables on them because the idea with these are you meant to daisy chain them together. So these actually have four connectors on them, which actually looks more intimidating and confusing perhaps than those first ones I showed you. But these have connectors on them, basically male and female. And so what happens is you connect one fan to the next fan to the next fan to the next fan and then you use an extension lead to run from that to your motherboard. These also use your standard generic 5 volt RGB connection and fan power connector meaning that you can connect these directly to the motherboard therefore bypassing the need for any controller of any sort in theory. So this means with these of course, there was abandoning the Commander Core and the Commander Pro, and you no longer need those controllers in your system with these newer fans. These are more affordable than the IQ Link fans, 
But as you can see, obviously more cabling, a little bit more complicated, a bit messier in your system, but you get them uh, more budget price, so that's the trade-off. Now, this is where the confusion comes because these are basically standard connectors, making it really easy to plug them in, whereas the original ones obviously weren't, and, and that can be confusing. So if you're looking online for how to wire Corsair fans and then you came across my old video, that wouldn't apply to this because these connectors won't work with a Commander Core or a Commander Pro. So that would just be a problem. Now it's worth noting also, as I discovered recently, if you have absolutely loads of these in your system, eventually you'll probably run out of the 50 RGB connectors on your motherboard. And although you can daisy chain the fans together, if you have loads in your system, because the cables are generally shorter, they're much shorter, they're about this length. You probably have trouble reaching the connector from one fan to another group of fans, to another group of fans, to another group of fans, and then finally to the motherboard. And therefore you probably do need a controller, but you can get something really generic, like the thermal right one, which has basically got RGB connections on it. It's got 10 RGB connectors on it total, and then it just connects to the motherboard with one single cable, and then it has SATA power requirements as well. So essentially Corsair has made it a lot easier to easily and more accessibly put fans into your system, but because the wiring has changed, it might be a little bit more confusing. And if you bought these fans and a commander core, you'd be stuck because that wouldn't work. Now you could plug the fan power connectors into the commander, but you couldn't plug the RGB connectors in there. And these fans won't work with IQ because they're not designed to, because they don't use that proprietary system. So you'd need your motherboard software, but that does have the benefit that these will work with signal RGB. So you can use signal RGB for your RGB lighting. So there's some ups and downs to the design, but it maybe is confusing. Now I've got explainers for each of these types of fans going into depth on how to wire them. And I'll link to those videos in the description because it'll be more clear for you. But I want you to know about that because if you've bought these fans or are looking to buy them, you need to know which ones you've got and which of the wiring guides applies. Otherwise it might be confusing. So that's really why I wanted to explain just the differences between them and how you'll need to set them up or think about setting them up in your system. So check out the links in the description to see more about what I'm talking about and hopefully this has helped. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.